welcome back to another round of win slips and tbds i've been doing these on a monthly basis i don't know if i'm gonna do that moving forward i think i want to do it on a monthly basis just because it's a, this is our first season and i think what we're experiencing as new uh is so much more but even as i get to like september i think uh as everything starts to become more routine um the content is going to be less and less so i think say like next year you know it might be a beginning of the season versus the end of the season so anyway this is the update for august uh first we'll start with wins and uh what i have here is that backing up has been a win uh for me in, uh, in august it's become a bit more natural uh it's become less stressful uh, even backing up to our driveway now is, is not as stressful. Part of it is probably just by rep repetition. And another part is I remember when I was in um, South Dakota, when I, was, when I was in Sioux Falls, that I was pulling into the campground there and I was backing into the site. The maintenance guy that actually helped me, he just mentioned like he started to help me back in and he said, you know, go ahead, turn your trailer turn it to the direction I need to but then he said he's like now follow it in once he says to follow it in that means for me I need to turn my turn the steering wheel so that the wheels on my tow vehicle is traveling in the same direction as the wheel of um, uh, of the trailer and uh, once that kind of clicked and it goes through my mind now it just made it so much easier once that statement clicked inside my head, it became much easier to pivot between turning the trailer itself versus um, uh, following the trailer in and turning the tow vehicle to straighten out uh, the trailer. So that was crucial and that was a, that was a big win. Backing in has, has been much easier since that and, um, and hopefully I hope that sticks around uh, come next season. The second win, I'd say, may not feel like a win, but in the long run, uh, it definitely is a win for us. And that is learning how to take a long trip. So our trip to Michigan uh, was nine days. I mentioned this in a couple of other videos, but at the end of the day, we felt like we were moving around too much over the nine day span. Like we were moving every two to three days. And we don't know, at least in the short term, in the foreseeable future, we don't know if that's how we want to travel just because of um, uh, like where our mindset's at and you know our current living situation. So um, I think what we would like to do is just like be have it more spaced out, stay at one place for a longer period of time to be able to really enjoy the destination, to have enough time to do everything that we want to do. Because oftentimes my work it might get in the way if I'm not taking days off and. Um, to be able to give ourselves the time and not try to squeeze in so many things and then also having to give up things um, that we may have wanted to do. Um, so I think learning how we want to do these longer trips is uh, has been really helpful and that's a, that's a win for us to figure out how we want to travel in the next, um, in the next few years. Um, the third win I would say is uh, Michigan. And I think I've said it before like Michigan has been a surprise for us we loved our time in the Upper Peninsula and there's so much that we haven't done and, and it definitely deserves more and more visits back there and uh, also Traverse City Traverse City like we call it Traverse City on, on three great days um, I think we might want to look at different campgrounds again if we go um, and um, something different than uh, where we stayed at uh, this last time. But man, Michigan is, is gorgeous. Uh, people were friendly up there and um, we definitely wanna go back and we do have plans to go back next year. So let's talk about the one slip that is coming to mind um, based on our travels in August. So um, you will have seen that we were up in Bemidji towards the end of August. And uh, that weekend, even though it was like maybe mid to high 70s during the daytime, in the evenings, uh, the temperature started to drop into probably, I would say, high 40s and, and low 50s maybe. And, um, you know, we were only there for two nights. 
and as much as we thought we would be able to like we're kind of shielded from the cold um, inside a travel trailer um, it got pretty cold at night and um, we just forgot to turn the uh, turn the furnace on so I was asleep so every morning it was kind of like yeah, pretty cold um, at the same time I don't know if I <laughs> would ever want to at least for now want to be in a position where I need to use the furnace quite often um, although I do understand it, it could have come in handy even at like a lower temperature setting um, that weekend so um, it got it definitely got chilly in the camper I think uh, our thermostat said that it was roughly 51 degrees when we woke up on Saturday morning and it was like 55 when we woke up on Sunday morning so um, we probably could have done a better job of managing like cold weather and, and just staying warm inside the uh, trailer um, for that weekend. Um, I think that's the only slip that we had that I could think of in, in August. So let's go to the TBDs. And this one is kind of a big one. It, it has been a consistent theme throughout, I think at least like July, August. And um, that is like unhitching. <laughs> I have it in my notes, I, ha I call it the um, unhitching blues. And um, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make sure the unhitching process is as smooth as possible. So what happens is like for whatever reason, the hitch ball is getting caught up in the coupler. Um, even if I pull the, um, pull the latch, uh, sometimes it gets caught up. So you have this effect where um, the rear of the car is kind of lifting up with the uh, with the coupler as you're um, putting down the tongue jack, and at some point gravity takes over and the whole thing just drops. That that's kind of a it's happened often enough now where it doesn't really phase me, but I also don't know if that's actually a good thing to not be phased by that happening. Um, but I don't know what it does to the car. I, I don't know if it's like if that type of action, um, like lifting the rear, you're lifting the rear axles higher. I don't know what the allowance is there. Like I don't know what the limit it is there. If I'm if I'm going past it or something and it's doing some kind of damage to the car that I don't know. Every time I go to film it, <laughs> it ends up working out a little bit. You know, I'm tinkering with it. I'm trying to figure out whether or not it's making sure I'm not parked in an angle when I go to unhitch, right? I'm making sure I'm straight. Or if I'm forgetting to pull the latch um, before I um, uh, before I try to go in on, on couple, I can totally see myself doing that. I haven't really caught it though, um, consciously. So, uh, so we'll look into that. And then, um, and I don't know, I don't know if the, like the, the hills, have like the angle between the trailer and the car has a thing it happens more often than not when we're parking at home um, although it's gotten better recently but I could see how if the trailer is on a slant because our driveway is slanted and then you're trying to like unhitch with your tow vehicle and my Durango is kind of like this um, that there might be some kind of um, friction that's happening that's causing it to just like um, uh, be either a lot closer uh, between the coupler and the hitch ball than it normally would be. Yeah, it's something I'm going to keep my eye on um, in September and um, going into next season. Uh, but that's it. That's like a really quick um, wins, slips, and TBDs. And um, we'll see you. We'll see you in the next video.